And if we look around at our different cultures and customs around the world, we can see different human explanations or theories as to what happens after death. For example, in the West, we typically bury people six feet underground. A lot of the time also, gravestones are put in the place where the dead is buried. Often nice, kind words in memory of the person are written on the stone. You also often see the words rest in peace or simply the initials RIP. This tradition came from early Christians and these letters were found in the Christian catacombs during the Roman persecution. And it simply meant that those who had died had died in Christ and were now at peace. Now if we go over to Tibet, the Buddhist monks practice the sky burial, where a corpse is simply left on a mountaintop to decompose and be exposed to the elements. The reason for this is, it is believed that once a person dies, their immortal soul transmigrates into another body or reincarnates. Therefore, the body is simply just an empty vessel and there's no need to really bury it, and so it's just left out in the open. The ancient Egyptians were buried in sarcophagi and were mummified, and also they were buried with any uh, valuable possessions that they wanted to take with them. They believed that whatever you were buried with, you would be able to take with you to the afterlife. And that's why when we went into the pyramids, we found all these vast amounts of gold and wealth, and even some pharaohs would bury their slaves or servants with them in hopes of taking all of this to the afterlife. In India, people are simply cremated alongside the Ganges River. This is a Hindu practice, and once again, very similar to the Buddhists, it's believed that once a person dies, their soul migrates to another body. In fact, over half the world believes in reincarnation. This includes religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and Sikhism. Even within Christianity itself, there is a diversity of beliefs in, as to what happens when a person dies. For example, the Roman Catholics teach that before a lot of people go to heaven, they visit purgatory. Purgatory is described as an intermediate state after death in which those destined for heaven undergo purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter heaven. Or simply put, it's a place uh, for those who are not good enough to go to heaven, not good enough to hell, and you spend a short time or a long time in there until you're ready to enter heaven. What happens after someone dies is a very difficult question to answer. Because it's not as though when someone dies, you're able to ask them what's on the other side. But we know that God's word is a reliable source of truth. And that if there was someone who would know the answer to this question, it would be God. So tonight we're going to try and answer this, this question, as well as understand better what happens after death as we read God's word together. And we're going to do that by answering 15 questions tonight and which will give us a greater context and understanding of this topic. So, question number one. What role will the supernatural play in end-time events? Revelation 16.4 For they are spirits of demons performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. We're told that the devil will perform false signs and miracles through false religion and spirituality in order to deceive people in the end times. This sounds very strange to us in the West because we can't really remember the last time we witnessed a supernatural phenomenon. We don't see it very often in our lives. And it's also strange because in the West we see traditional religious traditions on a decline. However, what we do see in our culture around us is a steady incline in new religious traditions and new religious expressions, a lot of which draw upon Eastern traditions such as Buddhism and Hinduism. And along with this come a lot of false teachings and false beliefs that we do not find in the Bible. If we really think about it in Australia today, there are a lot of common practices which are involved in this, such as tarot cards, clairvoyance, palm readings, horoscopes, crystal healings, seances. All of these false spiritual beliefs are in our country right now, and we don't have to look very far to find them. The devil and his demons will use miracles and deception during the end of time. And so that is why it is so important that we know really what happens after death and what the Bible teaches about it, so that we are then not deceived in these end times. So then, the question is, by what methods should we test supernatural phenomena? And when they say you seek those who are mediums and wizards who whisper and mutter, should no people seek their God? 
to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If we want to ensure that evil spirits do not deceive us, then the Bible, the law and the testimony is God's source of protection and truth. Question three, does God give any warnings about consulting the dead? There shall not be found among you anyone who conjures spells or a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. God warns us in the strongest possible language against making contact with our dead loved ones. And throughout history and even still today, this has been a common practice. There seems to be this desire to be able to, uh, to want to communicate with the other side. But the question is then proposed, why does God so oppose contacting the dead? Wouldn't it be reassuring to be able to communicate to a family member, perhaps to make amends or ask for forgiveness, to know that they love you, to be able to say words that you were never able to say here on earth? Why would God oppose something which seems so positive? We answer this in question four. Is it possible for the dead to talk to you? For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. <clears throat> We're told the dead know nothing, and here is, why, uh, here is where we begin to understand why God so strongly opposes communicating with the dead, because the dead know nothing. So if the dead know nothing, then who in reality is it that we contact? Any contact with the dead is in reality contact with an evil spirit. We're told it in the Bible the story of King Saul, and normally King Saul would consult the prophet Samuel, and Samuel would talk to God on his behalf. But recently the prophet Samuel had died, and Saul now had to communicate with God on his own. But Saul had turned his back on God and done things which he had said not to do. So although Saul prayed, God did not answer his prayers and did not tell him what to do. So, we're told that Saul consulted a medium or a witch to bring up the dead spirit of Samuel. And what's interesting is both the witch and Saul recognized the spirit of Samuel when it came up. We're also told that the devil and his demons can transform themselves into angels of light. And so this is why it may appear as though people are uh, communicating with relatives, but in fact it is, in, uh, it is reality, in fact, it is contact with an evil spirit. Satan still does this today, and we cannot be deceived by this. Now, in order to understand what happens after death, we have to first understand how God created human beings. And here we have a text from uh, when God is creating Adam and Eve, the very first man and woman. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The word being and soul are used in the Bible interchangeably. The Hebrew word for being, nefesh, is translated as soul hundreds of times throughout the Bible. So essentially in this text what we're given is the components which make up a human being. And it's simply the dust of the ground plus the breath of life equals a living soul or a being. A good illustration to understand this is simply we have a globe, fill it with electricity, and it produces light, or the body and the breath and the soul. Now, it's very important, and a, few, a lot of Christians miss this detail. The Bible says that you are a soul. God did not put a soul into Adam and Eve. He put the breath of life into them, and they became souls. And then at death, you cease to be a living soul. So, understanding what a person is made out of, what happens when a person dies. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. Now the Spirit that returns to heaven is not a ghost or a person. It is that breath of life that we read about in the verse before. And this spark of life is a gift from God and enables us to keep living. Once again notice, a person is a soul, and at death, that breath of life is separated, and our bodies go back to the dust. Question 7. What happens to our emotions when we die? Also, their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. The dead know nothing, and so they also do not feel anything. And it's a very simple concept to understand. The dead are simply just that, dead. 
So, can a soul die? And I love the simplicity of this verse. The soul who sins shall die. <clears throat> There's not a lot to understand there. It's not very hard to grasp. While the words soul and spirit are mentioned more than 1,700 times in the Bible, there is not one place that ever mentions an immortal soul. Clearly, as we just read in the last verse, a soul can die. A living person can die. And we're never in the Bible ever described of a ghost version or a mortal version of us inside, a spirit or soul which is immortal and lives on after we die. In fact, this is simply another thing that the devil has made. It is a lie, uh, it is a lie which is found virtually in every unbiblical religion. The fact that the body dies, but the soul goes on living. The religions of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, the ancient traditions of the Egyptian, Chinese, Japanese, the Norse, and even the majority of Christian variants believe that when a person dies, the immortal soul goes on living. Now as to where the soul goes on afterwards, there, uh, there's a diversity of beliefs. But in almost every religion we find this belief that the body dies but the soul goes on living. And yet God's word says, the soul that sins shall die. So, if we do not possess an immortal soul, who does have immortality? Who is the only one who has immortality? We read in 1 Timothy, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality. And Paul confirms this in Romans 2, 7 as well, when he tells believers to strive for immortality. If you're striving for something, that means you don't yet have it. We do not have an immortal soul that lives on, because we know that only God is immortal. So, do good people go straight to heaven at death? Let's see what Peter has to say. In Acts 2, he says, Men and brethren, let me speak to you freely of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. For David did not ascend into the heavens. If good people are supposed to go to heaven straight away, and David is not yet in heaven, I should be worried, because David was supposed to be a man after God's own heart. If he's not in heaven, what are the chances for us? But we don't have to worry. As we just read in the book of Acts, the Apostle Peter, some 1,000 years after the death of David, categorically states that David is not in heaven. Peter understands God's word and knows that David is still buried and dead. David knows nothing. He feels nothing. The breath of life has left him and he has returned to the dust and he has not yet ascended to heaven. We read more, the dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. Now, if you were dead and you'd already gone to heaven, surely you would be praising God. But the Bible says that the dead do not praise the Lord, because as we've read before, all emotions and worship and thought ceases once a person dies. <coughs> Pardon me. Question 11, does the, people, uh, does the Bible teach reincarnation? Before we get to the Bible verse, let's just address the fact that if we are to accept reincarnation, there are also a lot of other beliefs that come with it that we must also accept. For example, we must believe that the soul is immortal and it lives on, because the idea of reincarnation is that once a person dies, their immortal soul lives on and migrates to another body or another vessel, and then you live on that life until you die and it happens over and over and over again, this cycle of birth and rebirth. So we must first believe that the soul is immortal, and we've already clearly read in God's word that it's not. Reincarnation is also dependent on how you lived your previous life. For example, in Hinduism, a person racks up either good karma or bad karma during their life. Now, if you have more good karma in your life, you might be born into a wealthier or better off family or caste. And if, you're born, uh, if you have more bad karma, you'll likely be born into a lesser family. Now, by what standard are you held accountable to uh, after you've died? Is it the Hindu moral ethics, the Buddhist, the Christian, the Muslim? There are so many different standards. Someone has, uh, there has to be a standard by which you are evaluated to determine where you are reincarnated. And even then, who is the one who chooses? If you ask the Hindus, they might say it's the god Brahma. Perhaps it's just the universe. Who is the one who actually evaluates you and decides where your soul goes? There has to be someone to look over this process. 
So we can see in order to accept the notion of reincarnation, there are a lot of other beliefs that we also have to consider, or not only consider, but we have to embrace. So let's have a look at what the verse says. In Hebrews 9.27 we read, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this is the judgment. The Bible clearly says that this is our one chance here. We have one life, and we have one chance here to do what is right during this life. And then after that, after we die, then there is a judgment. Yet reincarnation is one of the fastest growing beliefs in our world today. And you'd be surprised, it's a very popular belief in our society as well. That it's very popular in that there are a lot of new religious expressions and traditions that have come into our world. And as I said before, a lot of them are influenced and rooted in these Hindu and Buddhist and other Eastern traditions, which all believe in reincarnation. And yet we know that this is simply another example of the devil trying to distract us from God's truth. So, let's hear what Jesus has to say about death. What did Jesus call death? And after that he had said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. More than 50 times in the Bible, death is referred to as a sleep. And sleep is a very good metaphor to describe death, because we, when we're asleep, we don't explicitly feel nor convey emotions, and we don't have any conscious thought. And that matches up perfectly with the other verses that we've read about in the Bible, that the dead know nothing, they have no emotion, and they have no thought. This is a very interesting one. Question 13. Did Jesus tell the thief on the cross he would go to heaven the day he died? And Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Or is it, and Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Notice how the meaning of the verse changes based on where you have the comma. If it's before, then it appears as though Jesus is saying, Today you will be with me in paradise. Whereas if it's afterwards, it says, I'm telling you today, you will be with me in paradise. So who decides where the comma goes? Because there's a very big discrepancy between this. The answer really is translators. The Greek manuscript does not have punctuation like we do, so as we're reading it and translating it, we have to do our best to try and put the punctuation where it belongs. But let's consider that the comma goes beforehand. Assuredly I say to you, today, this very day, you will be with me in paradise. If Jesus was in heaven with the thief on that very day, then he couldn't have been in hell taking the punishment for our sins. And that's the very crux of Christianity. Therefore, Christianity is dead. Now, if Jesus did go to hell and not heaven, then technically he just lied to the thief on the cross. And Jesus needs to be sinless in order for us to, uh, in order for him to make that sacrifice for us, in which case Christianity is also dead. So if you really want to put the comma there, you have a dilemma because Christianity is dead simply by placing the comma there. We know, based on what we've read from the Bible, we know that Jesus is saying, Assuredly, I say to you this very day, you will be with me in paradise. The thief on the cross will be in heaven, but when is the question. If not on that very day that he died, when will the thief on the cross be in heaven with Jesus? Question 14. What happens to the righteous dead at the second coming of Jesus? Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. It is at the second coming of Jesus that the dead will be resurrected. And this includes the thief on the cross, this is King David, this is any of our family members or relatives. This is when the dead will uh, be resurrected, and this is when they will be taken to heaven. We read on in 1 Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. David is not in heaven yet because he is awaiting the second coming of Jesus, and so also is the thief on the cross and all of our family members who have passed over. If we went to heaven at the moment of death, 
the second coming and the resurrection would all be pointless. There would be no need for Jesus to come back and, and for the dead to rise if they were already in heaven. So we know then that the hope for a Christian is the second coming. And our last question for the night, what sort of body will be given to the righteous at the second coming? For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. During Jesus' second coming, we are finally given immortality. We are given new bodies which do not corrupt or grow old or sick. And finally, as, Paul's, uh, as Paul said, we need to strive for immortality. All that hard work, that striving for immortality, it finally comes to fruition here as Jesus gives us a new body and eternal life. God will give us new bodies and we will live forever. This is the good news of what happens after death. We do not go straight away to heaven or hell. Instead, we are asleep in the grave, awaiting to be woken up at Jesus' second coming, where we will finally receive the immortality that God has promised us. There are three main points that I'd like for you to take away tonight. Point number one, a soul is a living being, and souls live and die. At death, people return to the dust of the ground, while the spirit of life returns to God. And finally, the hope for the Christian is the resurrection at the second coming of Jesus. And now with this information, you have to respond to it. The Bible says that death is asleep, and that if you should die before Jesus returns, is it your desire to be in the resurrection or eternal life? I certainly hope that Jesus will return before I die, but even so, I would desire to be part of that resurrection. And I hope for you that your answer will also.